hello hello in this video we're going to discuss mostly shapes uh why we get 3d shapes why some are, some are linear why some have molecular geometry different from electronic geometry so we start by explaining the vesper theory vesper theory was an attempt to explain 3d structures and improvement on the lewis drawings okay so vesper is an acronym standing for valence shell electron pair repulsion the molecular geometry will describe the relative position of atoms around the molecule and we can use ball and sticks to show that like i'm showing here so let's say that you have a carbon and the carbon is bonded to four hydrogens as simple as this structure is like this okay so this bond tells you that the, this hydrogen is away it's away it's behind your screen and then this shaded wedge tells you that it's toward you it's actually pointing towards your nose so I can relate this hydrogen to uh, to this one that seems to be a way and I can relate the towards hydrogen to be this one and then these two ones here will be on the plane okay see to connect it you are connecting the elements so you are connecting the elements in space and that would mean that I'm just connecting the hydrogen to the hydrogen to the hydrogen and this is connected like that and then this is connected down here but still you have a connection to the carbon from all those hydrogens so basically what you end up with is a tetrahedral shape so again molecular geometry you're connecting the atoms not the electron groups not lone pairs not bonds okay so again that tells me that ch4 is gonna have a molecular geometry that's gonna be tetrahedral okay now for water an example here of this molecule is water this is h2o without showing the lone pair electrons these are the lone pair of electrons that's a lone pair of electron a lone pair a lone pair a lone pair i would have shown the lone pairs here now don't focus on the lone pairs for now if i'm talk talking about electron geometry i'm connecting the h o h you see it's the shape of an inverted b uh, in inverted b v so the molecular shape will be bent in this case will it's gonna end up having a different electronic geometry we'll talk about that later down here electronic geometry is the arrangement of bonding and then bonding electron pairs around the atom basically when you're talking about the bonding and the non-bonding electron pairs what you're really talking about is what we call electron groups or electron domains so given the number of electron domains as you would count them you can predict the electronic geometry okay you predict electron geometry or shape so for example in water if i bring it back down here h2o um, if i'm looking at bonding and unbonding electrons this is one bonding region another bonding region but the lone pair the lone pair on the oxygen will be one electron domain each so we have four electron regions around the central atom which is usually our concern the central atom four electron regions so the electronic geometry will turn out to be tetrahedral for us however the molecular geometry of water was bent because in that case we are connecting the atoms so i've given you the overview by the way whenever the central atom does not have a lone pair usually the molecular geometry is usually the same as the electronic geometry 
the electronic shape for, for CH4 is going to be the same as the molecular geometry for CH4 because there's no lone pair. But you see an example like H2O, there's at least a lone pair. So the electronic geometry is tetrahedral, but the molecular geometry turned out to be bent. Okay, now let's dive in. That was just a foundation for this lesson. Now, before we discuss the specifics of molecular geometries and electronic geometries, let's define what electron groups or domains are. You can identify an electron group as one single bond, one double bond, one triple bond, or one lone pair. So for example, if I just pick up water, looking at the central atom, I have a double, I have a lone pair, I have a single bond and I have a single bond. So that oxygen right there has four electron groups or domains. And usually when you have four electron groups, most likely you have it as sp3 because we are saying we say that orbitals are areas around the nucleus where you're likely to find an electron so if you have four electron groups you need four areas four regions so most likely you are looking as at sppp what we call sp3 for h2o so the oxygen atom in h2o is sp3 hybridized and for sp3 hybridization the bond angle is usually 109.5 because you're looking at tetrahedral shape because you're looking at tetrahedral shape another simple example uh, that i'm gonna show here is ch4 if you look at the central atom you have four single bonds one two three and four so you have four electron groups again four electron groups again just like you had in oxygen and then the predicted hybridization will be sp3 and the bond angle around the bond around bond angle around the chs will be roughly again 109.5 again because it's sp3 now if you look at another example like carbon dioxide uh, the central atom is our concern you have a double bond you have a double bond you have two electron domains two electron groups so i'm predicting that we only need two areas for those electrons to be found so you are thinking by shortcut uh by layman's language by shortcut you would think two electron groups will translate to sp and for sp it's usually 180 degrees okay for sp is usually 180 degrees and it's linear because of course it's two electron domains and then uh there's another example i'm showing you just randomly around the table that when you have formaldehyde if you look closely the central atom right there has three electron domains a single bond a single bond and a double bond. there's no lone pair three electron domains will translate to sppp what we call sp2 and for sp2 by default the predicted bond angle will be roughly 120 degrees what that means that uh, what that means is the bond angle around these groups right here the bond the bond angle around the bonds is going to be roughly 120 degrees now there is a problem whenever something whenever a lone pair is next to a double bond okay so for example you can do resonances so whenever a lone pair is next to a double bond, we call that later on in organic chemistry, we're going to call that position allylic, the position where the lone pair is next to a double bond. So you can do resonances, meaning those electrons are not available. They can go to the right. And in that case, you make a double bond on nitrogen. Eventually, if you do formal charge of nitrogen, you get a positive. The lone pairs ran away. They're out there. Or you can do it the other way on the other side. No, so I'm just using this as an example to show you that whenever a lone pair, whenever a lone pair is in resonance, you really don't want to count it as an electron group. You don't want to do that. So if you're doing resonances to the right, 
then this is what we'll end up with. We'll end up with a double bond here, sorry, and a negative charge here, which means that this side, uh, that side stays, yeah, okay. So we'll get a plus charge on the nitrogen. So you can do the resonances going to the left or going to the right. The fact is this lone pair here is not available to be counted. So in that case, in this exception of counting electron groups, we would say that because this lone pair is moving around, it's not been, it's not going to be counted. I'm only going to be left with three electron domains with not counting the lone pair because it keeps on dancing by what we call resonance. These are the resonance arrows. So you're left with three electron groups. You're left with the bond here, the bond here, and the bond here around the central arrow or the arrow of interest. So the nitrogen in this case, is sp2 you do not say it's sp3 it has to be sp2 because the lone pair is not counted as an electron domain however if the lone pair is always there like in the case of ammonia if the lone pair is always there like in the case of ammonia you want to count that lone pair also one electron group second electron group this bond away bond is three this is four in that case, this nitrogen has four electron domains. It will be SPPP, what we call SP3. So just know that if the lone pair is taking part in resonance, it's not an electron domain. All right, so let's look at specifics. For linear molecular geometry, linear molecular geometry, Uh, you will want to have the all elements on the straight line. For example, if you look at CO2, uh, all elements are on the same line. So the molecular geometry, Mg, is going to be equal to linear for CO2. For electronic geometry, uh, we are counting the electron groups. Remember I said the electron groups, it's one single bond, one double bond, one lone pair, one triple bond. There is no lone pair on the central arrow. I told you the shortcut is Mg is going to be equal to Eg. Electronic geometry will be same as mole molecular geometry if there's no lone pair on the central arrow. And in this case, it's going to be linear. See how the double bonds, the electron groups are on the same line? And whenever it's linear, the bond angle is always 180 degrees. And of course, for hybridization, if you have two electron geometries, if you have two electron geometries, like we said in the table, the shortcut to know the hybridization is just going to be uh, through the uh, electron domains. If you have two electron geometries, it's SP. Because those are the two areas that you can you are likely to find the electrons, the sp habit orbital, which has a combined s and p orbital. Now, if you look at this, uh, uh, this uh, picture here, you see that the oxygens and the carbon are on the same same line. Okay, so it's linear. Okay, let's look at the, another one. In this case, we are looking at trigonal planar molecular geometry or electronic geometry. A perfect example is what I gave before, like formaldehyde. Okay, if you have formaldehyde and you're trying to connect the elements, which is what you do, you get a triangle when connecting the elements. So we, we go with the name trigonal. But it's going to be planar. It's going to be trigonal planar, meaning that the molecule, the entire molecule is going to be flat on the surface. So it's flat on the plane. It's going to be flat on the plane. Okay. All right. So molecular geometry is trigonal planar for uh, for this molecule but the electronic geometry though we have to 
count the electron domains, a single bond, a double bond, a lone pair, triple bond, and we group them. So we have it here. We have another one here. So that's one, that's two. And then we have another one here. There are three and all of them are on the same plane. Still, the electronic geometry will be trigonal planar. And I gave you the shortcut that when the central atom of interest does not have a lone pair, the molecular geometry is going to be equal to the electronic geometry. The bond angle is going to be roughly 120 around the central atom because our hybridization hybridization actually is going to be sp2 why because we have three electron domains three electron groups the circled ones three electron groups are telling us that we have to have sp and p by shortcut and then we are predicting sp2 hybridization Okay. For tetrahedral Mg and Eg, I will use a uh, CH4 again for exam as an example. A hydrogen away, a hydrogen towards us, and two hydrogens on the same plane. Again, if you were to connect the elements in space, which is what you do for molecular geometry, you will end up getting a tetrahedral shape. You will get a tetrahedral shape. And so the Mg of such a molecule like CH4 methane is going to be tetrahedral. Do we have a lone pair on the central atom? No. So I expect that the, mole the molecular geometry is going to be equal to electronic geometry and both of them will end up being tetrahedral. But let's narrow down on, on the uh, electronic geometry, electronic shape. This is a way that hydrogen right there, the white ball is a hydrogen, will have a dash. This is towards me. That's going to have a wedge. Uh, oh, the wedge is brought towards the element. And then these two guys are on the plane meaning they are on the same plane as your screen they are on the plane okay so this molecule is actually 3d you have four electron domains you have a single bond a single bond a single bond a single bond so we do have four electron domains and again the shortcut to predict hybridization is to know that you will need four electronic groups SPP and that translates to SP3 and you know for SP3 we will always say that the bond angle is going to be roughly 109.5 degrees it might change depending on the size of the elements around the central carbon or central element if they are big then it widens or if you have lone pairs, then it, sh it becomes less. We'll see that shortly. Let's look at an example of trigonal pyramidal shape, molecular shape. In this case, I use ammonia. Okay, and use ammonia to explain this. So a hydrogen away a hydrogen towards your nose and one on the plane as your screen. So for molecular geometry, we don't care about the lone pair. All we connect is the hydro the, the elements. Okay. So if I attempt to connect my elements, if I attempt to connect my elements, so I connect those, I connect those, I connect to the back, and then I connect that and that and that. So you end up with this shape. And that does look like a pyramid. But now on every side of the pyramid, you have three things, right? Like here you have a nitrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen on this face. On just that face, you have that. So you have three things. So it's trigonal. So the name will be trigonal. 
pyramid. Does the central have atom have a lone pair? Yes. Mg is not gonna be equal to the electronic geometry. If you look closely without showing the lone pair, this is what we see. See that? That's a trigonal pyramidal shape if you connect those elements. This representation of the cartoon here, that represents a lone pair. Lone pair. It's not bonded. Those electrons are not bonded to anything. So in this case, for the electronic geometry, uh, we are going to include the lone pair. In molecular geometry, we do not care about the lone pair. But in electronic geometry, go, going with the name electronic, we have to focus on electron domains. So how many electron domains do I have according to our initial table? I have a lone pair, count it as one. I have this bond, count it as two. I have this bond, count it as three. And I have this bond, count it as four. Okay. So we do have four electron domains. And because we have four electron domains, we are predicting SPPP. We are predicting hybridization of SP3. Again, does the lone pair take part in resonance? No, there's no double bond next door to do resonance. So we count it as an electron domain. Okay, so the bond angle though, is not going to be one on 9.5. It's not going to be one on 9.5 bond angle. Mm -mm. The reason is because the lone pair takes much, take, takes much room. So the bond angle right here is not going to be one on 9.5. I believe it's going to be something to do with 107 degrees for ammonia. And the reason is, the reason is the lone pair takes much room. Now I'll ask you, what is in the lone pair? electrons and then i'll ask you what is in the bonds electrons and then i'll ask you again what is the charge what is the charge of an electron what's the charge of an electron electrons are negatively charged electrons are negatively charged they are negatively charged negatively charged negatively charged do you want these bonding electrons to be close to the lone pair no because like charges repel. So you get repulsion. And that's why we're talking about valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. That is what makes these molecules go 3D. Okay. So even in CH4, even in CH4, those bonding electrons are shying away from each other. And so they take since they are shying away from each other, they maximize their space in space. So you get 3D. So instead of having CH4 straight on the plane, you'll have those bonds uh, repelling. I, I waited until I get got here to explain VASPAR so you'll understand. Now the lone pair will take more space than the bonding electrons. So these bonds will be repelled further away. And so the bond angle will be less than 109.5. 109.5, you'll get it as 107. However, in CH4, the bond angle is predicted to be 109.5. If you had two lone pairs, it would be even worse. This bond angle will be reduced roughly to 104, 105. Okay. So bond angle in this case for our SP3 is roughly or approximate, is less than it's going to be less than 109.5, but it's going to be approximately 107. Let's say so. Okay, so let's look at uh, another one. So for H2O, we discussed this before. It does has to, it has two lone pairs, but for molecular geometry, don't worry about the two lone pairs. Just connect the elements that's bent. And because the central element has at least one lone pair, we expect that the molecular geometry is not going to be equal to electronic geometry. The molecular geometry right now is bent. The electronic geometry, though, is going to be different. We have to consider the lone pairs in electronic geometry. Those lone pairs are not in resonance. So we count them. Sometimes they are on oxygen, but they're in resonance. We wouldn't count them. I talked about that exception rule. 
So we have two lone pairs and we have those single bonds. So if you count the electron domains, one, two, three, four. So there are four electron regions or domains or areas. So we predict hybridization to be SPPP. We predict predict the hybridization to be sp3 but again the lone pairs take so much room these lone pairs they take so much room and because they take so much room we are going to tell ourselves that the electrons in the bond are going to be repelled again Vesper theory valential electron pair repulsion theory Vesper theory will will dictate that these lone pairs will repel the uh, bonding electrons further and so the bond angle reduces greatly and because of that instead of 109.5 we grate it even reduce further to 104 in ammonia it was 107 because we only had one lone pair but here it will be repelled even further okay so again so what will be the electronic geometry given that we are counting also the lone pairs. The electronic geometry, by now you must have guessed, is going to be tetrahedral. Okay? And if it's tetrahedral, hybridization is 1 or 3. Hybridization is sp3, sorry. And we get a 3D. But for molecular geometry, it was bent because all you are connecting is hydrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. Okay? This is not common in organic chemistry, but it's, it's going to be understood this way. So let's assume you have, well, let's put that chlorine away. Let's put this chlorine towards us. And then you have these three chlorines somewhat on the plane, up, down, and on the plane. So this is a structure of phosphorus pentachloride. Uh, the central element does not have a lone pair, so I can quickly predict that my molecular shape is going to be uh, similar to my electronic shape. But if I'm to connect it, if I'm to connect the elements in space, I'll go this goes there, that connects to that, that connects to that. On the back, those connect, that connects, and of course, you have a triangle in between. So, on the top, you have something that looks like something that looks like a pyramid, right? So, and it's gonna be the same thing at the bottom. You'll have something that looks like a pyramid. So, we'll call this trigonal because each side, each face has three things connected, right? trigonal but because of the two pyramids up and down we call it bi pyramidal so it's trigonal bi pyramidal okay so in that case uh we would say that it's going to be both for molecular geometry and electronic geometry because if you are to count the the, the electronic domains with a cl here a CL here, the CL is away, CL is towards us, and the CL is on the plane with the phosphorus in the middle. That's a P. Let me clean that up. You will end up seeing that the electronic domains will count to five. Okay. So if the phosphorus is in the middle, one electron domain, two, three, four, and five. Remember again, the EG is still trigonal pyramidal, trigonal by pyramidal, sorry, because you have a pyramid on top and at the back. And these chlorines are spread like this be because of the Vasper theory, valential electron pair repulsion theory. You want to spread those electrons farthest away from each other. For hybridization, because we have five electronic regions, we have five electron domains, I would expect to have S, P, P, P. I've run out of the P's. Remember, P only carries six electrons maximum with three suboptos. So we'll have to add a D now. 
one, two, three, four, five. So the hybridization will be sp3 with one d. Otherwise, sp3d without writing the one. Bond angle. You have a mixture of bond angles. There is 90 there, and then in on the plane, on this central plane, there is 120. So there's a mixture of bond angles. There's 90 degrees and there's 120 degrees. That's how you can tie molecular geometries, electronic geometries, plus their shapes. Even these, in the next lesson, we'll talk about polarity. Uh, their shapes and even tie in bond angles and hybridization. I hope that helped. See you for another lesson.